Hi everyone, welcome to another video in my stick figure accounting series. So this is a series where I use crudely drawn stick figures and cartoons to basically simplify a more complicated accounting topic with the hopes of helping you understand it better. Um, on tap for today is inventory purchase discounts. And I should just go ahead and specify right up front that I am specifically referring to how to deal with inventory purchase discounts in a perpetual inventory system. This is where things um, often confuse students, is, 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 is the treatment of discounts in a, in a perpetual system. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, first, I'm going to show you not dealing with the discount to see how this plays out normally. And then I'm going to show you what changes because of a discount. And I hope, and I hope this um, kind of just helps you understand this better. Um, start off with, here we are. This is us. And we are a company, we're a merchandiser. So what we do is we buy our goods from wholesalers, then we mark those goods up and sell them to customers. So here's us, here's our wad of cash. And we are going to go ahead and buy some goods from a wholesaler, okay? So there's our wholesaler, there's our inventory that we're buying from that wholesaler. Boom, boom, he's holding it, he's gonna give it to him, we're gonna give him the cash. The result of this transaction is essentially going to be um, cash out, of, and let's say we're going to spend, I don't know, 200 bucks on this. And we're going to get inventory in. And that inventory that's coming in is also worth $200, right? What we pay for that inventory is the value of that inventory on our balance sheet. Notice this is just a swap of assets. We gave up one asset, cash. We got another asset in its place, inventory equal value. Doesn't change the value of our company or anything like that. It's just where we're at. Now, from there, um, if we were to look at our balance sheet, let's just take a look at that real quick. So here's our balance sheet, do, 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 balance sheet. We're going to show investors that we have inventory on that balance sheet, and that inventory is worth $200, all right? So having assets is a good thing. Having assets tells investors, hey, we have this thing that will bring future value to our business. So we like having that asset of inventory on our balance sheet. But what we like even more is selling that inventory. So if we then proceed to the next step, um, here we are, again, we're gonna, we're gonna stay on the left here. Here we are, and we are going to now be selling the inventory to a customer, all right? So here's our customer, do, do, do. And now that customer has a whole bunch of cash that they're gonna give us, okay? Now, when this happens, it's, it's something very interesting because we have cash coming this way, coming toward us, Let's say we charge $500 for this inventory, okay? And we have inventory going out, right? Inventory going that way. And that inventory is only worth 200 bucks. Remember our balance sheet back here, right? $200 worth of inventory. So what we've done is we have marked up this inventory because as the merchandiser, that's what we do. We bring it in at one price, mark it up, sell it for a new price. This inventory of 200 that's going out that is that becomes the cost of goods sold on our income statement. So that's the cost of this merchandise right here that we have sold to this customer right here, right? So on our income statement at that point, so here I'm gonna go income statement, income statement, we are gonna show cost of goods sold, 200 bucks. But you see this cash that we brought in? Well, that's the price we charged the customer, 500. That's the revenue we get to recognize from this transaction. So we are also going to have sales revenue, $500. And the difference between these $300 is what's known as our gross profit. Okay, And that gross profit, if we filter down to the end of the income statement, will be factored into net income. And so this is how things work without a discount. All right, We pay a certain amount. We mark it up and charge the customer even more, and the difference of that markup becomes our gross profit. Now, I am going to go ahead and copy all of these graphics to the next page, and I'm going to show you what happens when we factor in a discount upon purchasing the inventory. So here we go. Paste. Boom, boom, boom. And we're there. All right. So what I'm going to do in this situation is I am going to go ahead and scoot this sale over, and I'm just gonna add an extra piece in here. So boom, 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 and I'll just kind of shorten this, this arrow. Okay, so 
let's say we've got the same scenario. We bought some goods um, from a supplier. Um, now, in this case, what's going to change is instead of cash out, we are going to have a payable. So think of this as, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, instead of cash, we here's our credit card for the for the for the supplier. <laughs> this is not how it really works, but just think of it that way. We're charging our supplier credit card, and so we're saying, hey, we're going to pay you later, right? We're not paying you now, and so we're still getting two hundred dollars worth of inventory, which goes on our balance sheet, and in these payment later situations, what ends up happening is often the supplier offers you a discount if you pay early, okay? And so here, let's consider that, all right, now we are sitting down in this crudely drawn chair and we are writing checks and we are going to write a check out and we are gonna pay this bill and we are only gonna write that check for $180. The reason for that is because we've made a deal with our supplier. That supplier said, pay me early and you save 20 bucks, okay? And so we're paying early and we're gonna save 20 bucks. So we're only gonna pay that supplier $180. Now, here's the thing that tends to confuse students. Remember our balance sheet. Our balance sheet already has inventory of 200 on it. That was established when we bought the inventory back here but we only are spending 180 to actually get the inventory because of that $20 discount we're gonna get from the early payment. What that's gonna end up doing is forcing us to credit our inventory account and to bring the balance of that inventory down to 180, okay? So as a result of this savings, and I'm just gonna go ahead and bring up my red pen here, make a note, $20 savings requires a credit to inventory account. This is the part, that part I have in red right there, that's the piece that tends to, to confuse students is why am I reducing inventory? Because credit to inventory, credit and asset is a reduction of inventory. And students say, but wait, you still have all the inventory, right? You have this entire box that you bought. Why are you reducing inventory? Well, you're not reducing the quantity of inventory you have. You're simply reducing the value that you recorded at on your balance sheet down to the price you paid. Now, you might be saying, well, wait a minute, but you told me assets are good, right? And so don't we want $200 in assets? Like, doesn't this look bad to only have $180 in assets? Well, remember, you spent $20 less cash. So in addition to this inventory of 180, you also still have cash of 20. And so you still have $200 in assets. It's just not all inventory. So you still have the assets to report to investors. You still look good, okay? It's just a different mix. What happens after that is even more important and looks even better. Because what happens after that is when you make this sale, remember, you have the same quantity of inventory, which means that customer still willing to pay you $500 for it. Only this time, the value of that inventory going out, that value is only 180. And so when we think about this from an income statement perspective, our sales revenue is still 500, but our cost of goods sold is only 180. And therefore our gross profit now increases to 320. So there's no harm to our balance sheet because our assets stay the same value-wise, just different mix, but value-wise, they stay the same. And yet there's a benefit once we make the sale to our income statement. Because we spent less to get the inventory, we now recognize more profit due to the discount, um, reducing the internal cost of that inventory that we could still charge the same amount for because it's the same quantity of inventory. That's it. That's inventory purchase discounts in a nutshell. So um, thanks for watching. I, I hope you found this helpful and I hope you join me for another video.